best attire, <laughs> determined to demonstrate once and for all that the essence of humanity is tacky decoration, <laughs> self-love, and drama. <laughs> At Nightgowns, our mission is to celebrate drag with all the pomp and circumstance that such fucking hard work deserves. <laughs> and call me old-fashioned, but I refuse to celebrate drag without women. <laughs> We're gonna talk about it. There continues to be a very oxymoronic debate about what qualifies as real drag. Oh, yeah. So here is our official response. <laughs> mm. Trans women, trans men, AFAB, which is assigned female at birth, and non-binary performers, but especially trans women of color, have been do doing drag for literal centuries and deserve to be equally represented and celebrated alongside cis men. <laughs> Drag is performance. It's a form of entertainment where we combine the costumes of gender with an unquenchable desire to stand on the stage. <laughs> and we transform ourselves into queer superheroes. Yes. Gigantic, gendered, High fashion goddesses. <laughs> or whatever is the male equivalent of a goddess. <laughs> Truth be told, underneath these clothes, we are just eyebrowless, fleshy beasts. Just all earth tones. We're boringly similar. Drag is what we use to transform ourselves into unique, whatever, whatever, yeah. <laughs> I lost my face, I got really into it. <laughs> I'm actually proud of this. Unique, <laughs> hyper-gendered, queer Fantasia. Yeah! That's what we call drag, and that is what we celebrate here. People in our community have this lovely bad habit of using the word history very loosely to prove any kind of point. Um, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. Just kidding, I totally am. Because even though there is very little actual documented drag history, it's clear from the second that theater existed, drag existed. Woo! There was drag, trans people were doing it. <laughs> and when cis women started being allowed in theaters, then cis women doing drag was part of theater. It always has been. <laughs> and misogyny's been around a while too. Oh, shit. As soon as. <laughs> <laughs> <Shit is> right. <laughs> As soon as modern cities started allowing the proliferation of gay spaces, guess what we started doing in the bars and the bathhouses and the parks? <laughs> Fuck it. And then drag! Oh my god! Drag is literally so ancient that it predates modern understanding of gender, of transness, of queerness. Drag predates modern ideas of theater, of gender at all. Drag predates the word drag itself. <laughs> drag is fucking awesome. It should be studied and documented and understood beyond one television show. beyond a bunch of tired urban legends about Shakespeare and Marsha P. Johnson and Paris is Burning. So while we're at it, uh, oh, the shit. word drag is almost certainly agreed on that it's a Polari word that was coined in British Molly houses. 
slang for the German word to put on. It's not an acronym, and it's not from Shakespeare. <laughs> Marsha P. Johnson, by all accounts, was not even at the Stonewall riots until the, se until the second night. Did you even know that there were two nights? If any one person could be credited with starting the Stonewall riots, it was a butch lesbian of color who punched a cop, supposedly the famous drag king host of the Jewel Box Review, Stormy DeLarbery. <laughs> Speaking of Paris is burning, the first Harlem drag ball was in 1869. Woo! Despite constant attempts to shut them down, black and Latinx queer people in this city have sustained a beacon of gay culture that centers trans and gender non-conforming people for almost 150 years. There is more than just RuPaul's Drag Race. And the future is in your hands. Yeah. So, document it, talk about it, research it, celebrate it, facetune it. <laughs> or not. And just fucking enjoy it. So on with the show!